All right, guys, the ADV uh, Dual Sport Lift finally came, um, and we're going to go ahead and unbox it and uh, get it installed. So uh, it takes us a couple hours to do, and uh, we're going to go along with it. All right, so as you can see here in the kit, um, here are the geometry correction brackets uh, for the front lower um, arms. We have our uh, speedometer calibrator. This is a wheel chalk and a jack stand. Um, these are the bump stop spacer blocks. We've got new uh, rear sway bar links, front sway bar links, uh, bump stops for the front, uh, coil spacers for the passenger side and the front side, tuned Bilstein shocks specifically for the AE lift for the front and the rear, and then of course our coil springs. So dual rate uh, coil springs designed to handle the weight of an overlanding setup. So one of the reasons why we went with the AEV kit is specifically because it's set up for the overlanding setup, but as well uh, these shocks are tuned to these coil springs um, and it comes with a complete package. Now we're also going to add a Synergy track bar, uh, front adjustable track bar, which AEV doesn't say you need to do, uh, but we're going to do it anyway. So this is the kit and we're going to start off on the front axle um, and we'll take some measurements along the way so you can see the difference. And uh, so let's get to it. We're going to start by, uh, we took the tire off, we're going to take the sway bar links loose, uh, take the shocks off, and then we'll check, we'll let the track bar down uh, so it's not holding anything up. And uh, then we'll make sure all of the, uh, any of the connections that um, we learned on Jacob's Jeep that the brake lines that attach to the lower control arm, that all needs to come off so there's enough droop to get the the, bot, the uh, vehicle down. So uh, I'll take some measurements before we do anything else so you can see where the axle to the frame mount is so we can show out exactly how much lift there is. Um, and then we'll drop that lower control arm, move the bracket, and go on about that. All right, so on this front right, from the top of the axle tube to the shock tower is, uh, front left it is, is 10 and an 8. And on the passenger side, we are 10 and a quarter. All right, we're going to take the shocks off, just a 18 millimeter. The sway bar links are the same, 18 millimeter. Right, this lower track bolt is, track bar bolt is 21 millimeter. All right, don't forget you gotta unplug uh, the axle disconnect 
and then pull the retaining clip off so it's free so when you lower it it doesn't fall now we have to do the two control arms and the upper control arm has a little cover around it that uses a 10 millimeter socket you gotta take that cover off to get to the to the bolt and these are also 21 millimeter all right so the head of the bolt is 21 millimeter um the nut is a 24 millimeter thank goodness i had a wrench all right once you get uh both the brackets loose um you have the geometry correction bracket and it basically um, slides up into the frame and uh, it's easy to go one side to one side you put the original bolts in and then there are a bunch of shims depending on um, how much lift you have and we'll go over that in just a second all right these are the orientation shims um, and for the two and a half inch dual sport lift, which is what we have. Um, this is the way that's supposed to be. So the curved end points towards, the curved end points towards the front of the vehicle. And that just aligns that upper control arm or the upper control arm brackets in. So we're gonna take the track bar off now. And that's the same 21 millimeter. But I want to get the uh, springs out first and um, get everything down and then get the lower control arms back in. So we'll do that uh, right now. All right, we're going to take the shocks off and it's just an 18 millimeter. Um, and it's a straight through bolt. All right, so we'll lower the, the this uh, driver's side down until the spring pops out. We'll check all this is nice. So we did disconnect the locker. Um, and this probably needs to get popped off. We have some, some flexibility. And the spring just pops out. So by contrast, you can see this is the progressive rate spring uh, from AEV versus the factory Rubicon cool spring. And it only looks about an inch and a half, two inches taller, but it's gonna compress a whole lot differently. All right, so we gotta pull the factory uh, bump stuff out, um, pretty simple. And then it goes into this aluminum cup um, and then there's a uh, metric bolt that goes and bolts this to the top of the tower so there's a recess right here with a hole and you just drop the bolt in and screw it in so we'll just push this in and it just snaps right in place and then it basically just fits like that and then we'll tighten it up all right in order to uh, get the um, 16 millimeter head bolt down in there just a tip, take some painter's tape, put that on there, and then fit that over the socket. That keeps it nice and tight with an extension, and then you just drop it right down. Okay. All right, so we got it installed. So we're gonna take these, um, the coil springs in, the lower control arm is connected. We're gonna take these lower, uh, sway bar links off.
there you go so if you just once you put it on you spin it around a little bit and that helps kind of get everything set it does help to help two people though all right guys so this is the synergy track bar uh for the jl and while av says that you don't need one this is the difference between the tubing is a little bit thicker but when you look at the ends versus the stock ends and you have two-way adjustable which means it can be adjusted without taking it apart which is one of the benefits of the synergy system but if you just look at how much beefier this whole setup is it's going to make that axle hold nice and tight all right guys so it is the next day uh, i worked late into the night last night to do the rear part um, as it got dark and you couldn't see anything so the synergy um, track bar adjustable track bar is right there and installed so we got uh, the axle centered underneath basically we did that by taking a measurement off of the studs once the vehicle was level and um using a level off the studs we measured straight to the frame so then i did another frame measurement uh, for the springs and that was 14 and a quarter uh, so pretty that, good lift the vehicle looks really good and we got everything plugged in i'll take you around to the rear so that you can see uh what we did back there i also did want to show you guys this one thing so this pump this thing there are two bolts there's a bolt here that holds it in a retaining bolt and a bolt up here these things both have to come off so that you can access uh, the upper um, control arm bolt. So this has got to be pulled away or the bolt's not going to come in. So when I put the uh, correction brackets in, the bolt changes from the bolt comes in from the inside and you have the nut on the outside. But the factory one, the bolt goes through this way. And so in order to back it all the way out, this piece has to be moved out of the way. And that's really the rest from the front. All right, so the rear uh, was pretty straightforward. Um, this one only took me about an hour, an hour and a half, and that was probably just because it was dark. So we have shock mounts. We have the blocks that made the, um, gave a spacer for the sway bar. We have the rear track bar relocation bracket, which raised the track bar up to keep it in alignment. And then we have uh, the bump stop uh, pads that uh, for the axle itself. And those are just blocks of, um, it looks like this compressed plastic uh, that gets screwed down. So it was pretty straightforward. Um, the springs fit in there nicely. And uh, there's a shim on the passenger side in the rear, uh, just like there is in the front. And uh, it was really pretty simple. Um, to do is just uh, getting everything jacked up and moved out of the way and the, the one thing you got to remember is just unplug that e-locker um, cord so that when you drop the rear axle that it doesn't um, affect anything all right guys here's the pile of parts that we took off and uh, here's how the Jeep sits now so you can see uh, that it sits uh, quite a bit higher I think we overall got about a three inch uh, lift difference um, even though it's two and a half uh, it's a little bit higher in the rear but again this is designed for overlanding so we'll see uh, we're going to put the rooftop tent on um, here soon uh, after we go for a test drive but it it the stance is completely different I think it looks really good I'm really happy happy with the install and uh, um, Really happy with the quality of the AEV kit. All right, guys, so that's uh, kind of a wrap. Um, uh, the project took me about four and a half hours to do um, on my own. Uh, basic hand tools in the driveway with some jacks and jack stands and uh, just uh, read the instructions and get through it. So we will uh, take it out for a ride tonight and or this afternoon and uh, go back and retorque everything, uh, make sure everything's torqued to spec. Um, and then I'll let you, we'll uh, let you know how it goes. If you like what we're doing here and you like this kind of stuff, please like and subscribe and share and uh, stay tuned to the next video. Thanks for watching.